This is Broadcast Beat Magazine with Ryan Salazar. Ryan Salazar here with Broadcast Beat Magazine. We have a special guest, Mark Hamaker, Senior Industry Marketing Manager for Media and Entertainment at Autodesk. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Good to see you, Ryan. I'm really excited to hear about uh, your 2016 desktop subscription offerings for the new Flame family. Would you mind talking about that? Yeah, yeah. well, it's really big news. Uh, we're, we're, we're announcing every, to everyone, and I think it's probably kind of a surprise that what we're doing is we're really making uh, the entire Flame family of products more accessible than ever before. And what that means is we're introducing desktop subscription plans, which are term-based offerings for those products, meaning, um, you know, the way that works is instead of having to, you know, pay a huge upfront price, you can either pay a monthly, a quarterly, which is three months, or an annual plan, and you have the software active for that term. Um, and this is really the first time we've ever, you know, done anything like this with with Flame, uh, with Luster, uh, but also with our our kind of uh, assistant products there to those softwares, uh, which is Flame Assist and uh, and Flare. So, so really big news. And why is Autodesk making these changes, and, and how will they impact uh, current and future customers? Well, you know, I think the change is happening. I mean, a lot of what we've been doing uh, around the desktop subscription model is kind of in response to some of the changes happening in the industry. You know, we're, we're seeing our customers' uh, business models changing. You know, their customers are, are either consuming their content on more of a, you know, a term-based offering sometimes, or, you know, their jobs are moving to more project-based kind of work. So what's really cool about all of the subscription offerings is that they allow you to kind of pay for the software when you need it, and when you don't, you don't necessarily have to. So maybe you ramp up for a big project, you know, you add a few more seats for a few months as opposed to buying and putting the cash outlay for a system that you then have to keep running for perpetuity. Um, what's interesting with Flame, though, is all the desktop subscription plans are an addition to that business model because we're still selling the perpetual licenses of Flame if people choose to, to work that way. But, um, but we really think the desktop subscription will be a nice uh, option for people. And, you know, again, this is Flame. It's, it's a very high-end piece of software. Um, but I think, you know, it's pretty incredible when you think about uh, a post-production professional, an artist could start using Flame for, you know, $750 if they ch just pay every month, every 30 days. Um, you know, for a year, it's $6,000, which roughly equals out what you used to have to pay to keep Flame current anyway. But if you do the math on that, it's 500 bucks a month, which is, is pretty compelling if you think about being able to, you know, to get into a full seat of Flame for 500 a month. What advice can you offer to new facilities and freelancers looking to source their own hardware for these subscriptions? Yeah, and, and that's also new, right? So traditionally, you've always had to buy your hardware um, from Autodesk when you purchased a Flame or any part of the Flame family. Uh, and that's something that we're also going to, uh, you know, going to the subscription model gives us the flexibility to not have to, you know, tie the software to the hardware. So, um you know, let me give you a little background on what we're doing there. We're actually going to, uh, you know, make it possible for people to self-source their own Linux hardware if they want to run Flame uh, or Flare Assist or uh, Flare or Flame Assist on a, on a Linux box. But we're also going to introduce support for OS X for Flame, meaning that people could also, you know, source a Mac to run that on. And they're going to be able to, they're going to be free to do that. All they have to pay Autodesk for is the software. So we think this is going to make it a lot easier for people. You know, we've been hearing this for a long time, you know, Hey, I can get this hardware cheaper, or you know, I want to run this on a Mac. I want more flexibility. Again, that kind of ties to why we're doing all this. So I think, you know, I think that what I would say the advice for a facility that's just getting into this um, would be work with one of our resellers because these guys know these products. You know, work with an Autodesk rep, understand what you're getting into. You know, Flame isn't something you're going to download off the App Store and and just kind of run on a laptop. It, it's a it's a serious piece of software for people doing you know, high-end uh, finishing and post work. Um, so we want to make sure you have the hardware and, and, and kind of set up that you need to get that Flame experience. Uh, but I think with the accessibility of the, the way the desktop subscription pricing works, it's going to really open up the door for a lot of people who, you know, maybe they're a freelancer and they want to get their own Flame or Flare or Flame Assist system. Um, you know, maybe they're a facility that's just coming together and they want to make sure they have a Flame that they can, you know, uh, build their business on. In a recent conversation, you had mentioned to me about Extension 2 uh, for the Flame family of 2016 products at the end of November. Uh, could you explain that a little more? Yeah, so Extension 2, uh, we, you know, it's, it's funny. We're really kind of hitting on the development cycles really fast. Just, uh, you know, a, a month or so ago at IBC, we released Extension 1. 
of the 2016 release. Uh, so what was happening is we were moving to the desktop subscription model or adding desktop subscription, and we were also adding you know, the option to run Flame on OS X. Uh, so we thought, well, let's just go ahead and issue another um, extension with that as well. It's not going to be maybe as big as some of the full featured releases, but it gave us a chance to, you know, to put some, um, put a few of the features in that the guys have been working on, and it, it just adds a little bit more value to the product. Um, so you know, the primary features, most of them around media and I/O. You know, there's updates to like the latest Red SDK for for bringing media in. Um, you know, the DNX uh, HR formats are going to be supported across all the Flame products as well. Uh, Luster for color grading, get some GPU acceleration and things that we think Luster artists are going to be, you know, very happy to have. So, you know, a fairly, uh, uh, a nice welcome set of features, I would say, probably not the biggest, but the, I think the thing people will be really excited about is the option, um, you know, that also comes with that extension, which is to have Flame, uh, you know, running on OS X or Linux. It's your choice. Why did you guys decide to bring Flame to the Mac, and, and how do you think the community will react to this? I think people are going to be really excited. Just the, you know, we've, we've been talking to a few people like yourself very quietly before the news breaks, uh, talked to a few artists here and there and validated, and people are really excited about the flexibility. Uh, you know, I think in terms of why, um, it, it's kind of time. Like, you know, the Mac platforms are doing great, and we've uh, we've had software on the Mac for a while, you know, and Back in, gosh, 2010, we started with, with Smoke and some of that, you know, part of that original Flame technology going onto the Mac. But since then, you know, we've introduced Flare, which is the full compositing uh, package from Flame as an option that can run on Linux or on the Mac. And also Flame Assist, which is like a timeline-based conform uh, versioning effects kind of workflow all around the timeline that's from Flame. And, and those have been running on the Mac or Linux as well. So we see that the performance is there. Um, and, and quite frankly, people have been asking for it. You know, if you think about, uh, we talked earlier about the way uh, the business has changed. Things are more project-based. Well, you might want to be bringing in freelancers. And it's really appealing if you can bring in a freelancer who can bring his own system with him. And, you know, sometimes for, for some jobs, the Mac might be a great option for those freelancers. Mark, when can users expect to, uh, to download Extension 2 and how? Yeah, so extension two uh, and, uh, and and flame uh, as an option, the the OS ten option, those will be available. We're, we're shooting for November twenty fourth. Um, actually, as of November fourth, so probably by the time you're seeing this, you'll be able to purchase the desktop subscription versions. Uh, you know, of the flame family. Obviously, you can't buy the version that runs on OS ten until it's available. But you know, as of November fourth, those changes are in effect. Uh, also, as of November fourth, you're not uh, required to buy that hardware from Autodesk. So. So really, November is going to be a great month for people in finishing in post. Uh, and then one more thing that I want to make sure I, I get in there is, um, you know, I've talked a couple of times about Flare and Flame Assist. And those are two products that are really made up of some of the core technology in Flame. They were originally designed to sort of work as a kind of an expansion of the Flame within a facility. So if you had a Flame doing the finishing work, you'd have a Flare doing compositing or, or Flame Assist that's doing, you know, conform timeline archiving work. Well, we're actually also going to make those available for purchase to people without having that requirement to own a flame. So if you think about what this means, not only are we bringing flame out as a, you know, really accessible desktop subscription, uh, we're also making flame available on Linux or Mac, uh, as well as flare or flame assist, which could be great options for freelancers or people that are just kind of starting out. They'd have access to, you know, a lot of that great core flame technology. Um, you know, so people have a lot of choices and a lot of options. Mark Hamaker, Senior Industry Marketing Manager for Media and Entertainment at Autodesk. Thanks so much for spending your time with us today. Thanks, Ryan. Good to see you.